The S&P 500 and Nasdaq gained for the eighth straight day, their best run in 2024 as stocks continue to recover from a sell-off sparked by recession fears. Treasury yields hold steady ahead of the release of Federal Reserve meeting minutes and the Jackson Hole Symposium. Asian markets trade largely higher, tracking queues from Wall Street and ahead of China's announcement of one-year and five-year loan prime rates. The gift nifty is also suggesting a higher start for the Indian market. Crude prices slump overnight to around 3%. Brent slips to $77 a barrel as the United States pushes for a ceasefire in Gaza, while Chinese demand continues to decline. Shoring up deposits takes centre stage as Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman meets public sector bankers at the first meeting after new government took charge. FM calls for a special drive to garner deposits after concerns over the flight of household savings to riskier assets. Good morning in the Mumbai News Centre. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast. Those are the top headlines we're tracking and we'll discuss them in greater detail. But first up, as always, let's take a look at what's happening in the global markets and specifically in the Asian uh, markets. Uh, so it's largely a green looking screen. The macro data has come in in line with expectations. China has left its prime loan rates unchanged, which was again expected. The Taiwanese index up around 84 points. Hang Seng, which was much higher yesterday, is absolutely flat, but with some positive bias. If you look at something like a Nikkei, which is surging in trade right now, it's up around 1.5%. So barring Shanghai, most of these indices are in the green right now. And GIF Nifty, that should come up for you on the screen because that will indicate the moves for our own markets. 62 points higher, that is what the Nifty's implied open is suggesting, going by the GIF Nifty rate right now. So looking like it could be a good session for our own markets. Let's talk about the U.S. markets now. Wall Street ended higher with S&P 500 and Nasdaq posting their eighth positive session. The Dow Jones added 236 points and investors will closely monitor the Fed minutes which are due tomorrow and commentary from central bankers at the Jackson Hole Symposium. U.S. 10-year yields slipped marginally to 3.89 percent while the U.S. dollar hit the lowest since March. And Yardini Research's President Ed Yardini expects a rate cut by the Federal Reserve in the upcoming September meeting, while Morgan Stanley Investment Manage Management's Brian Weinstein believes Fed should continue to fight inflation, but the narrative needs to change. Expectations are uh, 25 to 50 basis points of the September meeting. I think there's still expectations that uh, maybe we'll even have 100 basis points between now and year end. Uh, I think it's going to be 25 basis points at the September meeting, and I think it's going to be one and done. Economy's just doing too well. I know that people got freaked out by the last employment report, but uh, I think a lot of that was weather. And some of the other indicators that came out uh, kind of confirmed that, like housing starts, single-family housing starts took a dive in the South. So if I'm correct about that, uh, they're going to get some indicators before the September FOMC meeting. That suggests the economy is alive and well and the labor market's doing well. The market got a little ahead of itself. And why? Because we know the inflation story is old, right? The Fed had inflation up at eight or nine. They were behind the curve. They got the story back. We don't want to wait for a full blown recession to start to ease. All the Fed needs to do is remind people they will still fight inflation. A five percent or a four and three quarter of uh, uh, percent Fed funds rate is still high enough to be restrictive to fight inflation, but to give a nod that growth is also slowing. That's what the narrative has to change to. Maybe a Jackson Hole, but it's sometime in the next few weeks. Okay, all right. That's the global market action, but how will these overnight queues impact our own markets? We have our research team joining in bright and early to tell you what the trade setup looks like, the stocks that are likely to be in the news, and the action from the FNO space. Uh, very good morning to all of you guys. Uh, let me come across to you first up, Vivek. What is the market setup looking like today? Well, good morning. You know, it's another day, another session where we actually have very good overnight queues. All of the market overnight rallied quite significantly. And in fact, when you're talking about all three indices of the U.S. markets, all of them ended in the green. In fact, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq have now seen eight straight sessions of gains, so indicating a very good handover overnight. Now, along with that, the other positive factor has been the fact that crude prices continue to see a sell-off even on Monday. So WTI prices down almost 3% yesterday, you know, now closer to the $74.5 a barrel mark. 
Brent prices took hovering around the $78 a barrel mark. Now, Indian markets yesterday, a very choppy trading session, a very range-bound trading session. However, you know, Nifty, when you're talking about that, it did end in the green, but the bank Nifty was the one that underperformed, and even within the banking constituents, you actually saw private banks drag, but PSU banks actually did relatively better. The Nifty metal index was amongst the top uh, gainers yesterday. All of the metal stocks yesterday saw a rally between 2 to 4 percent, aided by the slide as far as the dollar index was concerned. Now, advanced decline ratio, when you're talking about that, continue to favor the bulls. Today, a couple of cues to watch out for. You know, you have a listing, uh, Saraswati uh, Sari Depot list today. The IPO, remember, oversubscribed by 107 times. When you're talking about the morning cues, Asian markets are rallying and Gift Nifty also indicating a gap of start for our own markets. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for all those cues. Vivek, let me go across to Sudarshan. He lists out the stocks to watch out for in today's trading session. Good morning, Sudarshan. Morning, Sunil. So, we'll start with Bajaj Auto. Like Mauti, Bajaj Auto also going to make provision of which 211 crore deferred tax created on investment income and this provision is due to withdrawal of the indexation benefit and change the taxes that uh, finance minister had announced in the budget. At Siltex, Shiv Walia will replace Pratik Agrawal as chief financial officer. Shiv Walia is currently corporate vice president and global head of financial accounting and planning. Indusind Bank has got RBI approval for mutual fund business via new subsidiary. Zomato and Fin Singapore likely to sell 1.54% stake via block is today and Offer size of the deal is dollar four hundred eight million, and flow price is seen somewhere around two hundred fifty two per share. Polymedico has announced uh, QIP. Sources say issue size likely at rupees thousand crore. Indicative price is seen somewhere in the range of eighteen hundred fifty to eighteen hundred eighty per share. All cargo lo logistics has disclosed business update for the month of July and has recorded highest ever monthly volume that is up six percent month on month and five percent year on year. And company expect the momentum to continue through the year. Suraj states to raise up to rupees 500 crore via issue of preference shares and warrants. And these preference shares and warrants will be issued to non promoters. Nuclear software is going to consider share buyback on August 22. High tech pipes to raise funds up to rupees 600 crore via QIP or other modes. And last is Zagal. Promoter has sold 4% stake via block deals in yesterday's trade. Okay, all right. That's a long list and a lot of block trades, actually. Thank you so much, uh, Sudarshan, for joining us as always. Let's talk about all the cues from the FNO space now. Mangnam, enjo Mangnam is joining in. Good morning. Good morning. So, good global cues. Crude has fallen overnight, and as a result of which, the Gift Nifty is indicating a 64 point uptick. But the problem is not the open, the problem is the close. Yesterday, as well, we opened about 60 points higher, but the open itself was the high on the Nifty, and then we ended marginally in the green with the Sensex actually going in the red itself. What is the problem pocket for the markets? This is the financials. The Nifty Bank was under pressure in yesterday's trading session. In fact, it's facing some congestion around that 50,800 mark. The Nifty Financial Services as well, lower by about a third of a percent in yesterday's session. Though, no problems with the broader markets. The advanced decline was firmly in favor of the bulls. But if you look at the Nifty Next 50 as well, which is a proxy to how the broader markets are faring, very strong, almost six-tenths of a percent in terms of gains that have come by. Um, the financials are being sold by the FIIs. Yesterday as well, they sold about nearly 2,700 crore in the cash market. The DIs went ahead and bought 1,800 crores. On a net basis, the flows were around 900 crores on the outside. And the FIIs also sold about 300 crores in index futures, unwound some long positions, added a few short positions, and as a result of which, their short contracts are now at a net 350, again, at a 50-50 keel for the FIIs in terms of long exposure. Um, in terms of nifty or active options, just look at the 24,600 call and the 24,600 put. Both of them are equally active, telling you that the street is playing for a bit of a range and consolidation. Even today, the options based range for the Nifty is 24,475 on the lower level to 24,700 on the way up as well. And that ties in with, uh, you know, the technical uh, levels as well. The 20-day moving average, extremely crucial for the Nifty on the way down as a support, but extremely crucial for the Nifty bank on the way up as a resistance as well, which ties in with yesterday's high on the Nifty bank. Uh, what can move this market right now? It's HDFC Bank because yesterday it defended the 20-day moving average, 1625. And now it's, uh, you know, important for it to cross the 50-day moving average of 1635. So that's something we'll watch out for. And in the second half, we'll also have the Nifty Financial Services expiry playing out. So to that extent, this will be an important component to watch out for too. In terms of other stocks that we're looking at, uh, you know, uh, we have Balram Purchini, Birla Soft and Hindustan Copper, all of them that have entered FNO ban. And Biocon has come out of FNO ban. So those are a bunch of stocks we'll be tracking. Okay, all right. That is the FNO setup. Thank you guys for joining in today and telling us what to expect from today's uh, trading session. But we'll slip into a break. When we come back, we'll get you the highlights from the finance minister's meeting with PSU Bank representatives and more. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're watching Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Well, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman met the heads of public sector banks and regional rural banks to review their performance. We learn that the Finance Minister has asked public sector banks to carry out special drives to boost deposits. That's not all. She has also asked them to implement a new MSME credit assessment model based on digital footprints and cash flows. Sapna Das joins us now. Sapna, what's the message from the Finance Minister? Well, uh, first of all, it's a bit of a change in the situation. It's a reversal of the situation. Like a few years ago, we used to listen or we used to talk about banks doing loan mailers. Uh, you know, basically to attract credit, uh, but or rather uh, to make sure that there is credit offtake. And now they'll have to undertake special drives uh, for deposit mobilization. So, you know, probably the same kind of model is going to be adopted, but for a different purpose altogether. Having said that, this is an important advisory uh, coming from the finance minister, probably stems after uh, the Reserve Bank of India's uh, indication or warning that, you know, this could translate into systemic risk. The fact that uh, continuously the credit offtake is much higher than the deposit mobilization. The gap there, I think, is around 300 to 400 basis points, and probably the banks will have to try to do something to make that good. Of course, in terms of doing these special drives, uh, you know, banks will have to, like, watch out for if, if there are higher interest rates that are going to be offered on deposits, that is already happening, but that will also translate into higher lending rates to an extent. Some of the banks have already done that. So there are other issues also involved. We'll have to see how this really impacts the economy, uh, if at all, in the coming months. Uh, so that's an important advisory being given by the, by the finance minister to the PSBs. Second, she's also told PSBs to ex expeditiously implement uh, the new risk, uh, the new credit uh, risk assessment model uh, for MSME lending. This, of course, will be based on cash flows and uh, the digital footprints and not on the balance sheets alone. Remains to be seen how that pans out. Last but not the least, she's also spoken about you know banks government regulators and security agencies coming together to basically handle cyber risks now here is something that we have to watch out if there's something else that the government has in mind that they may that they may be announcing at some point in time but for now all attention on banks in terms of how well they're able to do the deposit mobilization and what kind of special drive they are able to undertake to attract those depositors Sapna, thank you so much for joining us with all those important details. With that, let's uh, move on. Government puts the controversial broadcast bill on hold for now. The bill was proposed to classify online content creators as digital news broadcasters. Sources say that the government will assess the need for new regulations after consultation with stakeholders. They added that the government is open to drafting a new bill if necessary following these consultations. The drafts from 2023 and 2024 will no longer serve as the foundation for this consultation. The government will assess the need for these new regulations based on feedback from stakeholders. The process of reworking the broadcast bill is expected to take over a year. And one year after Parliament passed the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill, government sources say the rules for implementing the Act have been finalised. Sources say draft rules for consultation and public comment will be issued within 20 days. Stakeholders will have 60 days' time to give their feedback. The government is hoping to begin implementation of the Data Protection Act within this financial year. Okay, all right. With that, we will slip into a short break. When we come back, we'll talk all about the cues from the commodities market. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. We spoke about equity markets and global market news as well. It's time to talk all about commodities. Manisha Gupta is joining us to get us uh, up to date with the commodity space cues. Good morning, Manisha. Morning, Sonal. Thank you for that. Well, uh, the crude oil prices have seen a decline for a second straight day. It's been a 3% decline overnight, and this is on the back of easing supply worries, hopes of a Middle East ceasefire as well. And then the Chinese demand concerns amid weak economic data also have just about continued. Not just crude oil prices, heating oil also has declined to a 14-month lows. But that is where the declines really end, because the other commodities seem to be doing quite well. You have the gold prices holding near all-time highs. Uh, this is on the back of dollar decline. So $2,500 per ounce is holding. Silver also has gained up to a four-week highs. We have seen strong gains come in, not just in copper, which is trading at a two-week highs, but a smart rebound in zinc, which has gained 2% uh, in the last one week. The nickel prices also are off their lows. 
steel prices are trading back above 3000 chinese yuan so the metal price is really coming back in favor okay so metal pack coming back in favor thank you so much uh, manisha for joining us with all those details with that let's move on and let's bring you some updates on the kolkata rape murder case as nationwide protests continue against the rape and murder of a trainee doctor at rg kar hospital in kolkata the supreme court is set to hear a suo moto case related to the incident a three judge bench headed by chief justice of india dy chandrachud which had taken cognizance of the incident has kept the matter on the top of the cause list for hearing at 10:30 am today Meanwhile CBI will conduct polygraph tests on the arrested accused Sanjay Roy. This comes after the CBI took over the probe from Kolkata police as the Calcutta High Court expressed lack of satisfaction with the probe done by the Kolkata police. Let's uh, focus up north to earthquakes with a magnitude of 4.9 and 4.8 respectively have struck Jammu and Kashmir's Baramulla today within the last hour as of now it is yet to be determined if there were any casualties. or damages in the area okay before we wrap on the show let's quickly take a look at what the gift nifty is doing it was largely a green looking asian screen so the gift nifty is indicating that the start for our own markets could be in the green it has come off from the highs earlier it was suggesting a 62 point uptick right now it's around 45 points higher but yes looks like it could be a green day whether we sustain those gains or not is something time will tell But for now, it's uh, curtains down on this edition of Bar Breakfast. Uh, stay tuned. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.